Hey guys and welcome to another episode. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to install an upgraded rear sway bar on your car. So if you guys saw my previous video I showed you how to install a front sway bar and the process of installation is very similar between the two. So right here I have an upgraded sway bar that I'm going to be installing on my Nissan 240SX. Now the installation is very similar from car to car. The only difference and the only complication that you may ever run into is you might have to drop your subframe just a little bit to get access to it. For this installation today we're not going to need to lower anything Thing. It's literally unbolt the end link on each end, undo the brackets that are holding the bushings in for the sway bar, remove the sway bar, and then reinstall. It's really easy, and I'm going to show you guys how simple it actually is. For today's install, these are all the tools that you're going to need today. So obviously you're going to need your upgraded sway bar along with the bushings that come with it. I bought new hardware only because I didn't want to reuse the old rusty bolts that are now 20 years old on the car again. Inside this box was a full end link kit for both ends. This is the full end link, so this, the end links, the bushings, everything that you need for your sway bar. I didn't know that it came with both sides, so I actually purchased two of these, expecting it only to be one end link for both sides because that's how the front was. The rear is not like that. This is a full kit, so just take note of that if you guys plan on purchasing this kit. You're going to need some silicone lube to lubricate the bushings for the sway bar. I'm going to be using some anti-seize for the bolts, so the sway bar is going to want to come out easily down the road. I've got an inspection light, a deep 12mm socket, a short 12 with an extension, a 14mm, another extension, a wire wheel, an electric impact gun, and my pneumatic impact gun. So using all these tools today, I'll be able to remove and reinstall my new upgraded sway bar. If we take a look at the passenger side rear of the car and we try to find our sway bar that we need to replace, it's going to be down here and it's that dinky little bar right there on the center of the screen. So that little thing right there needs to come out along with the end links found there and on the exact same spot on the driver's side of the vehicle. So we have a 12 millimeter nut on the bottom that we need to remove. We have a 12 millimeter nut on the top that we need to remove. That will release the end link from the sway bar then finally, there's two bolts found one right there and the other one on the opposite side that are holding the bracket down, securing the bushing and the sway bar up to the subframe. I'm going to get started by removing this nut right here from the top of the end link. So using my 12 millimeter socket and my impact gun, we have the little nut, the metal piece that goes over top of the rubber bushing, slide that out and then that's everything removed from the top of the sway bar. On the bottom side, we have the exact same thing and we're gonna take that out going from underneath this control arm right here. From the bottom side, we have the end link, that same 12 millimeter nut, the metal piece, the rubber bushing, and then we have the sway bar. Now we need to take all of these out so we can extract this from the control arm. So from the looks of it, these are a little bit too rusty for me to take off because it's literally just stripping. Now we don't need to remove them, but if you can remove them because it's going to be a little bit easier when we need to take all of this out. I'm going to move on since we at least have one of them out. What I can do is actually swing the end link down along with the sway bar once I do the exact same thing to the other side. Next up comes removing this bracket right here. So it's held in place by two bolts, one on this side, one on this side and they're both 14 millimeter bolts. So we're gonna need to take both of those out. I already went in ahead and removed the opposite side just to see how difficult it was going to be to remove these. It's not going to be too bad, but if you have an impact gun, it's gonna take it out like a breeze. So just come under here and take each one of these out. At this point, we can take the bracket off now since it's a little rusty and the car is 20 years old, it might be a little bit stuck on there. But you should be able to get it off. Same thing goes with the bushing. Slide both of those off and you should be able to slide this out of the way. Since the sway bar goes over top of the exhaust, we might have to go ahead and turn the sway bar while we're taking it out so that it's not going to come in contact with the exhaust system because it just might be in the way. Just turn it, jimmy it out of the way, and we should be able to take it out without disconnecting any bolts for the exhaust or anything else for that matter. So as you can tell, we have the stock sway bar right here and the aftermarket bigger one right here. So this larger sway bar is going to be 2.8 times stiffer than this one here. So this right here is a 16 millimeter sway bar. This is a 27 mil. 
sway bar. Not only that, the end links on the old one, they're really shot, they're deteriorated, and the rubber bushings on them really need to be replaced. These newer, nicer ones that come with polyurethane bushings are very nice and are not going to wear out like the stock ones. So we're not only gonna be able to see a huge difference on how this behaves, but it's also going to stay working this way for a long time. We're not gonna have any kind of deterioration issues like we have here with this setup here. We're gonna be utilizing the same brackets that we had before for the old sway bar on here. So it's all going to match up. I also went ahead and bought new bolts because the old ones were looking a little rusty. So I have a new nickel plated one right here and the old rusty one right there. So this is going to be a very nice upgrade. Everything's going to look perfect and I can't wait to throw this in and actually take the car for a spin. Because we need to use the same brackets that we were using on our old sway bar, if your car is a little old, they could be looking a little shot. Now, this doesn't mean that they're not good anymore. This just means that we need to take care of them and give them a little bit of love before we actually go ahead and mount this on the car. So this is one of the old brackets. And once you clean it up and make it look nice, put some chassis saver on there, it's not going to rust out again like this one here. And you can see this one looks great. So I'm just going to throw this in my sandblaster, paint a little bit of chassis saver on there, and then we're going to have this final product. With the brackets now painted up black, we're ready to go and throw this on the car. Now the one last thing that we need to do beforehand is just put a little bit of silicone paste where the bushing is going to sit on the sway bar. So it's going to sit right about here. So I'm just going to apply a little bit on this area and then grab the bushing, slide it over top and just basically work in the silicone on the bushing. This way that when we go over a bump, if the sway bar wants to move up and down, it can spin freely from this little rubber bushing. So just slide it around, do the exact same thing for the other one, and then we can go ahead and throw this on. So underneath the car, once you have the sway bar lined up in the bracket right there, you can grab your bolt, you can slide it underneath, you can have your light die on you, and just thread this in place. You're going to have one bolt found here on this side, and the same thing on this one here. And then at this point, we just need to install the little sway bar end links that go right here because the sway bar can still move, but it's not connected up to the control arms yet. So that's where we're going to grab our end links and bolt all that up. To install our end link, I've got the big bar with one bushing and one metal part attached to it on the top. So I'm going to slide it just a little bit in there, and then I'm going to install the other end of it underneath the control arm. So down here, I've got that one bushing the other metal shim, and then after that we're going to need to install this little piece right here. So that goes on the screw, we're going to slide that up, try and push the sway bar down while we're doing this, and then we need to install the other end of the bushing. So we've got the other metal shim, it's going to be facing down, we're then going to have another polyurethane bushing shoved on the shaft, and then we're going to push this through the sway bar, like that. We're going to tuck it up, and then we're going to attach the other polyurethane part, push this down because it'll want to come up. And then we're going to follow it up with the metal shim and then our nut down on the end of it. So when you're done this, the little bushings that we have on the actual end link should look crushed. So we should have a decent amount of like squeeze to it. And once it's installed, once it's tightened up using a 14 mil impact and a 14 mil wrench, that is good to go. So we've got the sway bar mounted up, we have the end link mounted to the sway bar, and then the top part of the end link mounted up to the control arm. Once you do this to both sides of the car, we can put the wheel back on the car and take the car for a drive. Okay, so I just took the 240 out for a rip and oh my gosh did it handle completely different. Now right now it still has 16 inch wheels with a very tall profile tire and that's something I want to change up. I want to upgrade to 17s, run a lower profile tire and maybe even go a little bit wider because these are 205s right now. Yes they do step out nicely but because the sidewall is so soft there is still a little bit of body roll. But the chassis itself is not really moving that much. So with the upgraded front sway bar and now the upgraded rear sway bar the car is pretty dialed in. I need to bring this down to an alignment shop, but there's still a couple more things that I want to get before the suspension is completely sorted. So next up, I want to take care of my front tie rod ends that are extremely rusty, and I bought this wicked tool to take them off no matter what. No matter how rusty it is, no matter how damaged it is, this tool will be able to take it off. But anyways, if you guys have any questions regarding this video, or even if you want to see the video of me sandblasting those brackets, check the description box in the outro. If you have any other questions, throw them down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to help. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.